Hi everyone. In a previous video I explained smartphone charging systems with charging powers up to around 35 watts. In this video I will tell you more about the latest smartphone high power dual cell charging systems with charging powers of 100 watts or more. As mentioned in the previous video, most modern smartphones use USB power delivery direct charge or direct charge divide by two systems, where the phone will request bus voltage and current from the charger adapter in PPS mode to charge the single cell battery. With these systems we measured maximum charging power levels of around 35 watts. So how can we increase the charging power even more? Well, you can consider to use a divide by 4 system, which basically consists of two capacitive divider circuits placed in series. VBUS will now be around 16 volt. A high voltage divider divides it to around 8 volt and a low voltage divider steps it down to 4 volt. So this system divides the input voltage by 4 and multiplies the input current by 4. So with a 3 amp cable you could charge up to 12 amps and with a 5 amp cable up to 20 amps. But these very high current levels result in high losses in both the charger system and the battery. Another way to increase charging power without increasing current is to use two batteries in series for a higher total battery voltage and charge these with a single high voltage stage capacitive divider RT9758 in PPS mode. Another low voltage capacitive divider stage is then used to step down the dual cell voltage to a lower voltage more suitable for cell phone electronics. In discharge mode, the capacitive divider step down basically means that the system sees two batteries placed in parallel, thereby doubling the battery capacity. So two 2 ampere hour batteries in series will be for the system the same as one 4 ampere hour battery. In charge mode, you charge the two cells with the same current, but now the charge voltage is twice the cell voltage. So the charging power is double compared to a single cell charging at the same current. Charging two lithium ion or lithium polymer cells in series requires special care. When you charge them while only checking the total battery voltage of the two cells combined, it could happen that one cell reaches its maximum voltage sooner than the other cell and this cell could possibly overcharge. This must be avoided as it can be dangerous. To avoid exceeding the maximum cell voltage, multi-cell charging requires cell balancing. During charging, the voltage of each individual cell is checked. If one cell voltage is higher than the other, a part of the charge current of that cell is bypassed, thereby reducing the charge current in that cell. The current bypass is stopped when both cell voltages are equal again. Here is the example where the bottom cell voltage is higher than the top cell voltage. The balancing circuit enables the bottom charge current bypass. During charging, the cell voltages gradually equalize. Then the bypass is disabled and the cells charge with equal current. In this way, there is no risk of overcharging one of the cells. The cell balancing function is often implemented in the battery gauge IC. This IC will also report the battery pack state of charge, takes care of battery protections and has accurate battery voltage and current sensing. The charging system will need a buck boost switching charger like RT9490. The integrated buck boost function will ensure that the two cell batteries can be charged when VBUS is lower or higher than the total battery voltage. In high power charging systems, it will be active in the pre-charge and the last part of the constant voltage mode. During the high power part of the charge cycle, the buck boost switching charger will be bypassed by a higher efficiency converter. This can either be a smart load switch for direct charge or a high voltage switched capacitor divider for direct charge divided by two charging. The RT9758 is a high efficiency dual phase switched capacitor divider with 5 amp output current capability, but it can also work in bypass mode for direct charge applications. 
as most smartphone electronics are designed for single cell voltage range of 3.3 to 4.2 volt, another switched capacitor divider is used to step down the two cell battery voltage to a single cell voltage level. All these devices are connected via the I2C bus to the smartphone MCU. The PD controller RT1715 will take care of the USB Type C power delivery communication with the PD travel adapter. Let's take a closer look at the high voltage capacitive divider. Here you see the RT9758 EVB. You can see that the application footprint is really small, but it can deliver up to 5 amp of charging current. Let's use this EVB to charge these two lithium polymer battery cells in series. In the actual application, the RT9758 VBUS would be controlled by the PD travel adapter operating in programmable power supply PPS mode to control the VBUS voltage and current in small steps. But for this test, I will use my lab power supply to control the VBUS voltage and current and use a PC to control the RT9758 I2C registers. I will measure the input current and input voltage and the battery current and battery voltage. Let's also measure each separate battery voltage to check the cell balance. Here you can see the complete test setup. The two voltmeters show the input voltage and battery voltage, which is around 7.7 volt. For starting up the system, I have set the input lab power supply close to the battery voltage at 7 volt and I set a 5 amp current limit. Let's now run the RT9758 GUI program. In the settings and status tab, you can see the status indicators, the function selections and parameter adjustments for charging and protections. The device starts up with the battery charger enabled in bypass mode with a maximum 5 amp bus current and maximum 9 volt bus voltage. But because the 7 volt input voltage is lower than the battery voltage, the VBUS low error shows and the device is in standby mode. When I now slowly increase the input voltage, you see that when the input voltage reaches the battery voltage, the VBUS low error disappears and the RT9758 automatically switches into bypass mode. When I now slowly increase the input voltage more, you can see that both input current and battery current rise together, which is logical as the RT9758 is operating in bypass mode. When the current reaches 5 amps, the lab power supply starts to work in constant current mode. We are now charging at around 41 watt, the efficiency is around 96% and the power loss in the circuit is around 1.7 watt. Let's check the system in direct charge divide by 2 mode. First we disable the charger, then set the operation mode selection in divide by 2 mode. As the input voltage will be at least double the battery voltage, I set the VBUS OVP protection from 9 volt to 18 volt and I enable the charger again. You can see that the VBUS low error shows because the input voltage is too low for the divide by 2 mode and the device is in standby mode. In divide by 2 mode, the input current is only half the battery current. So for 5 amp battery charging current, I only need 2.5 amp input current. So I set my lab power supply current limit at 2.5 amps. I now increase the input voltage again. When the input voltage reaches around 15 volt, the VBUS low error disappears and the RT9758 now switches into forward divide by 2 mode. When I slowly increase the input voltage more, you can see that the battery current and input current rise together, but now the battery current is 2 times the input current. When the input current reaches 2.5 amps, the lab supply operates in constant current mode and both input current and battery currents keep stable. The battery charging current is now 5 amps again. The input power is around 41.2 watts, the output power is around 40.1 watt, which means the efficiency is now 97.2% and the power loss is only 1.1 watt. So the divide by 2 mode is more efficient than the bypass mode. The two battery voltages are quite close, 
so the batteries are well balanced. The IC top temperature in this condition is around 55 degrees C, which is quite okay for a 41 watt charging system. You might have noticed the single phase mode setting in the GUI. This function lets you set the phase delay of the two charge pumps. In this divide by two operation mode, one phase is set to 0 degrees and the other phase is set to 180 degrees. The measurement of the two phase signals indeed shows that they are phase shifted 180 degrees, which gives the lowest ripple in the output current. You may have heard about some smartphones that can charge with 100 watts or more and can be fully charged within 20 minutes. So how is this accomplished? These phones use the dual cell charging system as explained before, but now they use two high voltage capacitive divider circuits in parallel, thereby doubling the charge current capability. So with a 5 amp input current, this system can achieve 10 amp of charging current. Some smartphones use special charging adapters that can provide 6 amps of current, and then the charging current can reach 12 amps and charging power can be more than 100 watts. So how can these phones be charged in less than 20 minutes? Well, total system battery capacity in the dual cell phones is roughly the same as the single cell phones, around 4.5 ampere hour capacity. But each cell now has 2.25 ampere hour capacity. You can see that the total volume of two 2.25 ampere hour batteries is about the same as one single 4.5 ampere hour battery. If you charge two 2.25 ampere hour batteries in series with 10 amps, you effectively charge them with around 4.5 C, and with 12 amps, you would charge them with 5.3 C. As we have discussed previously, charging these batteries at 1 C takes around one and a half hours, and as you increase the charging current, the charge time becomes shorter and shorter. Charging at 5.3 C can indeed fully charge the battery within 20 minutes. The RT9758 has some special features that make it very suitable to be used in high power parallel charging configuration. The address pin allows setting three different I2C addresses to allow multiple devices on the same I2C bus. In parallel application, one RT9758 will be configured as the master converter and the other will be the slave converter. RT9758 has a bidirectional sync pin. The master will send sync pulses to the slave, and this allows the devices to operate at the same frequency with phase interleaving. RichTech has a special EVB to test the RT9758 in parallel configuration. Let's test this EVB in the same way as before, using my lab supply to control the input voltage and current and the PC to set the I2C registers. Here you see the measurement setup. As we are running in divide by two mode, I have set the lab supply just below two times the battery voltage. Each RT9758 can deliver five amps, so the total charging current will be 10 amps. The input bus current will be half of that, so I set my lab power supply current limit at five amps. Now I have to set the I2C registers of both devices. On the EVB, each IC has a different I2C address, so I run two GUI, also with different I2C address. The left window is the master and the right window is the slave. First we disable the chargers. Then I set the master sync enable function, set the function to divide by 2, set 18 volt VBUS OVP, master phase A is kept at 0 degrees and phase B at 180 degrees. To set the slave, I set the sync slave enable, set the sync enable function, set the function to divide by 2, and set 18 volt VBUS OVP. But for interleaving operation, I now have to set the slave phase A at 90 degrees and the slave phase B at 270 degrees. Then I enable the slave charger. Back to the master, I now also enable the master IC. Now I can switch on the lab supply. As the input voltage is too low, both master and slave are in standby mode. I have also probed the master sync, master phase A and slave phase A. 
let's see what happens when I now slowly increase the VBUS voltage. When the VBUS voltage is close to two times the battery voltage, you see that the master sync and phase A signals appear. And then the slave will also become active when it receives the sync signal from the master. Both master and slave are in forward divide by two mode. When I probe all phases of both master and slave, you can see that they are perfectly interleaved with 90 degrees phase shift in between. This will reduce the charge and current ripple and improve efficiency and current sharing between the two converters. I will now measure input and output voltage and currents with my oscilloscope. When I slowly increase the VBUS voltage more, you can see the battery current and input current rise together and the battery current is two times the input current. When the input current reaches 5 amps, the lab supply operates in constant current mode again. The battery charging current is now 10 amps and you can see that the batteries are charging very fast. The IC temperature is now around 58 degrees C. We are now charging at 86.6 watts with 96.9% .9 efficiency and total power loss is 2.7 watts. The batteries are getting slightly warm in this high current charging condition. As soon as the maximum battery voltage is reached, the system must reduce the charge current. So I reduce the input current to maintain 4.2 volt maximum battery voltage for each cell. I found that I can fully charge these cells within 15 minutes. You might wonder whether these cells can handle such high charging currents. Actually, I took these cells from a high current battery pack, which are normally used to power drones and other radio control models. These packs have extremely high discharge current capability. They can deliver more than 120 amps and they can be charged up to 8C so up to 18 amps. Conventional low current lithium polymer cells have rolled electrodes which have rather high internal resistance. The high current battery cells use stacked electrodes which are then connected in parallel. They are designed to have extremely low internal resistance down to 1.2 milliohms so they don't heat up so much under high charge or discharge currents. I assume that smartphones with high power charging use similar battery cell construction. In my measurement, I used the maximum 10 amp charging current during the complete constant current part of the charge cycle. But we see that most high power charging smartphones will only use the very high power charging during the first part of the charging cycle and reduce the charging power for the remaining part. This will reduce the temperature rise in the phone and will help to get a more optimally charged battery. Of course, this will result in a slightly longer charging time. I hope you now have a better understanding about smartphone high power battery charging systems. Please stay tuned for more interesting videos at Richtech, your power partner.